when my guest swings her sword, diseases disappear. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. Sword? When she swings the sword, diseases disappear? <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. This is a supernatural sword. But my guest, she's got two doctorates. She doesn't seem like the kind of person that would be a walking disaster. You were a, a nightclub singer. Yes. And I mean, it, it just doesn't happen every day that someone walks in and shoots you in the head. That's right. Well, how did that happen? My brother and I were in a band together, and we traveled from the time we were little, uh, playing in nightclubs and as a warm-up act for big-name entertainers. And one night, a man walked in the back and shot me in the head. Why did he do that? No one knows. He got away. No one knows who did it, but I was shot right here, Sid, did in the hurt? head. Yes, it hurt. <laughs> I'm sure. It felt like a mule kicked me. I know because really? I've been kicked by a mule and it hurt. Or I was also hit by a baseball bat once. It felt just like that, wham, right in the head. And I fell forward and they dragged me out. Were you unconscious though when no, you fell forward? No, I was, I never lost consciousness. Hmm. And they took me to the hospital, dug the bullet out, washed it out with salt water, x-rayed me, and the doctor said, you're fine, go home. You get shot in the head and you're fine and they dig it. That doesn't, Incredible. they don't do that in the movies. No, no, uh, they don't get up and walk away in the movies when you get shot in the head. But there's a reason. I have a list of 75 disasters that happened to me. Plane crashes, car wrecks. I drove a Volkswagen off a cliff once. Terrible things that happened, but I'm here today to tell you this story because somebody was praying for me. Somebody prayed for me all those years. Now, you were actually involved in bands that were involved in witchcraft. Explain yes. that to me. Yes, I, I ran around with a band that, I won't name them, but a satanic rock band, and all their music was very wicked. Um, I actually went with the leader of that band for a while. And uh, one day I just asked him, I said, where do you get those horrible songs that you write? And he said to me, we all get in a room and the songs just come. We know that to be automatic writing. And he said, the songs just come, we write them down, we record them, and then we take the master tape to a witch coven and they pray over it. So that when we press the records and they go into people's homes, demons go home with each record. Did this bother you at all? It when bothered you... me a lot. Why? Even though I didn't know the Lord at that time, it troubled me because I wanted to do music that helped people. Even then, I wanted to do music that made people happy. The music that these people wrote, a lot of people committed suicide. They had a song, I won't name it, but they had a song that caused a lot of young people to commit suicide. They had a laser light show that destroyed the retinas of uh, eyes. I used to sit up on the stage behind them on the amplifiers and watch the crowds go completely insane when they would do their music. And uh, we toured with them. I, I'm horrified to tell you this, but we toured with them. And uh, I'm so glad that we no longer do that sort does of that, thing. Does that still go on today, in oh, your opinion? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, many of the rock groups that, especially in the late 60s and through the 70s, were very satanic. And they used demons to help them write music. Now, you were into drugs. Yes. Were you addicted? Yes. To what degree? Very, very addicted. Um, also alcohol. I just drank day and night. Uh, out of curiosity, when you're high, you're high. Yeah. And you're happy, but you always come down from the high. Did you, were you just lying to yourself and telling you, yeah. I'm happy, happy? Or did you know there was something 
My way life was off. up and down and up and down. We had drugs to help us sleep, drugs to wake us up. Uh, you know, when you're in the world and you're, especially when you're a musician, you can get any kind of drugs that you want. And so there was a, uh, a great many things that I had uh, that I think probably the common people can get now, but uh, back then it was just mostly musicians that did all that stuff. Now, there was a point where you were singing and you used to do Janis Joplin songs, yes. among others. Yes. Uh, you were also involved uh, as a, as a warm-up act for a lot of famous entertainers. Yes. Uh, it was the, the Coasters, the Drifters, who else? Chicago, uh, Herman's Hermits, Leon Russell. We could just sit all day and name but, them. But one day you were singing a song, and I've never heard of such a thing, but uh, what was the song you were singing? I was singing A Little Piece of My Heart by Janis Joplin. Um, I came up from behind the amplifiers with my microphone. And I came out screaming on this Janis Joplin song because the song begins with this big scream. And as I did it, um, I was very drunk at the time, very high. As I did that, my throat tore and blood gushed out. And I fell forward onto the audience. And they took me home, and I was told, Sid, that I would never sing or speak again, ever. How'd you feel? I was devastated. I mean, that's you. That's music your, that's, was my life. That's music your was my God. Yeah. See, I worshiped the God of music. And uh, to take that away from me, it meant my life was over. I wanted to kill myself. The, the doctors didn't give you any hope? No hope. Nothing. Well, what actually nothing. happened? It's that your voice uh, cord. Just, I can't just tell you the medical uh, reasons, but I can tell you that I couldn't speak and I couldn't sing. And so uh, one day a friend of mine who was a backslidden Pentecostal boy, but he was mm -hmm. really backslidden, he just came to me one day and he said, why don't you just get on your knees and ask the Lord to heal your voice? Yeah, but the doctor said there's, she'll never I mean, this is awful. How would you like that? All of a sudden, you're belting out a song, you're a professional singer, and you will never speak? You will never sing again? No hope medically? And some Christian guy says, oh, just pray and you'll be okay. <laughs> well, don't go away. We'll be right back and find out what happened. YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here with Bree Keaton. I mean, how would you like to be a professional singer and one day on stage you're, you're smashed, drunk out of your mind, and you're singing a Janis Joplin song and screeching, the screaming it literally, and blood starts pouring out of your mouth. That's what happened to Bree Keaton. And she was told by the doctor she would never talk again. She would never sing again. She was totally devastated. And some Christian guy says, well, Jesus will heal you. So what happened, Bree? <laughs> I waited till everybody left the house, and I got down on my knees. Wait, why'd you wait till everyone left the house? Well, I didn't want anybody to see this. I, I, I was kind of embarrassed. Wait, wait a second. You act like a first-class character on the stage. You'll right. do anything. You're drunk, out of your mind, right. and you don't want anyone to see you say a prayer? Right. Okay. I mean, I don't want anybody to see that. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> okay. What if it didn't work? And then I would be really embarrassed. So what I did, I waited till everybody left the house. I got down on my knees. Now I couldn't speak, but I mouthed the words. And I said, Lord, if you're really there, heal my voice and I'll give it to you. Instantly, my voice was healed. Did you feel anything? Did you see anything? Yes, I felt a warmth all surged through my body. I stood up 
my voice was back. So you obviously then used your voice from that moment on to glorify God? Oh, no. Why? No. Why? <laughs> well, you know what, Sid? Nobody ever came and told me Jesus Christ could be my Savior and He could set me free from drugs. He could set me free from alcohol addiction. He could set me free from witchcraft. He could set me free from all the things in my life that were hurting me and destroying me. No one came and told me. Take me to the worst day of your life. I mean, the worst day had to be when you decided life was too hard. Yeah. I want to do myself in. I mean, it, it, you, what, what, what were you thinking when you wanted to commit suicide? I had just reached the end of myself. I was trying to do everything in my own strength, and I only have a little strength. None of us have a lot of strength. Only God has a lot of strength. And I just came to the end of my strength. I was very depressed, and uh, I began to have thoughts of suicide. So. I got out all my pills one night. I was in Florida, and I set them all out on the bed, reds here and so forth and so on. And I lifted the pills to my mouth, and the phone rang. And I mean, phone again, rang. that's just like in the movies. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 I mean, seriously, that close to? Yeah, right there, and the phone rang. What, what did you think would happen if you died? Did you think about this? I didn't think. I thought I would have relief from the despondency that I felt. See, I would come out on stage at night, and I would do the show, and it was all smiles, but I would go back to my hotel room every night. We lived on the road for years. My brother and I, and he quit show business, and I had my own band. For years, I was just alone. And so what people saw on stage was not who I really was. So, so basically, you were smiling on the outside and crying on the inside, like some of you right, right now. So the phone rings. What happens? I said, hello, and it was the keyboard player in my band. And he said, there's something on TV. You've got to see it. I said, leave me alone, man, just like that. He said, no, 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 no. Turn on the TV. You've got to see this. And I said, all right. And I hung up the phone, sat down the pills, went over, turned on the TV, and there was Pat Robertson looking right at the screen, pointing his finger right at me, and he said, put down those pills. How did he know that? <laughs> I was shocked, and I'll tell you, shock waves ran all through my body, whoosh, like that. And I said, God, you've got my phone number. God had my phone number, and he has your phone number, too. And what happened? I went and flushed all the pills right then and right there. But what if you needed it? You know what? I knew that if God knew my number, I didn't need those pills anymore. I needed Him. From that point, how many pills, how many drinks? None. Not, but withdrawal? Gone. Did you feel anything? Nothing. Did you feel anything when this happened? I didn't. I felt this shock run all through my body, heat run all through my body, and I was delivered of drugs and alcohol on the spot. Just like that? Like that. Just like that? Just like that? She prays and says, I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I make you my Messiah and Lord and God free. Well, you know what? God knows your telephone number, too. And you are going to have, you mark my words, you are going to have an experience with the living God when I come back, and you will never be the same. This is interactive TV. Get ready. Be right back after this. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. In a moment, I'll be back to Bree Keaton, and I promise you, you are going to have an experience. Many of you are going to be physically healed, but I want to go to the control room, speak to Janie Duvall. Janie, I mean, she gets a phone call just before she's ready to pop the pills to kill herself, and she says, 
God's really interested in me. And today she's got two doctorates and angels show up and people get healed. It's, I mean, it's unbelievable. But God is interested in us. Absolutely, and I, what's interesting is that she saw the supernatural, the ugly side of the supernatural, and now she sees the wonderful side of the supernatural with the miracles that she sees. Who's our guest next week? You'll be interviewing a man by the name of Ricky Roberts, and Ricky was born retarded. He was diagnosed three points higher than a moron, and today he has seven doctorates. Well, you know, medically speaking, this is probably one of the greatest verified medical miracles I've ever seen. The same with me. I have never heard of anyone born retarded and they, they were unable to learn. And then now he's so brilliant. And, and you know what? I was looking over the notes of that show and he was in a special education class uh, and the teacher had decided, he was with kindergarten and first and second graders in special education, and the teacher decided he couldn't hack that. Of course, he weighed 300 pounds and he was 14 or 15 years of age. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 was, he couldn't even learn in special ed. And what's also interesting is that in, when he did get healed, he jumped seven grades instantly. Looking forward to it, Janie. Thank you. Now, Brie, what is that that you have in your hand? This is a sword. And the Lord told me in 93 May to take up a sword and that strongholds would be broken off of people. People who were demonized would be set free. People who were sick would be healed. Give me an example of someone demonized. What, how might that manifest? Uh, say, uh, someone like with a drug addict? Could they be demonized? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, I believe that evil spirits Pornography? Come. Yes, absolutely. People get set free from pornography. Uh, confusion. Confusion is demonic oppression. Schizophrenia. There are all sorts of mental illnesses people can be delivered from. Now, you had a revelation of when the whip was striking Jesus. Yes. Tell me about that revelation, the, 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 the stripes, the whip cracking yes. on him. In May of 93, uh, the Lord showed me a vision of Jesus receiving his stripes, which are whip cracks on his back. He received 39 You, you know, whip I cracks. understand that whip has some metal at the end yes. of it. So it's not just a whip hitting the flesh. It's yes. a whip hitting the flesh, the metal going into the flesh and ripping it out. Ripping the flesh away. And what I saw in the vision was uh, flesh and blood just flying everywhere. It was a very horrible, graphic vision. But it showed me the extreme suffering that he took for you and for me so that we could be set free, so that we could be healed by his stripes. That's the stripes on his back that he took. By his stripes, we are healed. We can be delivered. We can be healed of every physical disease. That's right. Now understand that when you sing and, and swing this sword, there's someone with you. Who is that? Yes. There's a big angel. He's about eight feet tall. And many, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people have seen this angel. He wears all white and he wears this big sword. When I take out my sword, he takes out his sword. When I Swing my sword. I won't hurt you with okay. it. I've only broken two pulpits with this. When I swing my Serious? sword, seriously. Serious? Okay. But they needed to be. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> when I swing my sword, he swings his in concert with me. The Lord sends his angels to work with us. Is he here now, right He's now? He's here. He's standing right know? behind me. How do you know? Because I can sense his presence. He is here. And I can see him. Would you sing that song now? Yes. And would you be ready, be expecting, it's time, God knows your number, be expecting an encounter with the living God. Bree Keaton. As I begin to swing this sword, release your faith 
and trust the Lord to set you free. He's here to do that right now. Jesus just walked in and he's standing right beside me. Some of you will actually see him and he is stretching out his arms. As I call out diseases, he will take them and he will fold them in his arms. By his stripes, we were healed. And the Bible says, Behold, Lord, you have given me power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt me or you in the name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. Trust in him. This sword is the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the living God. And as we speak the word forth, you will be set free. Amen. The Son of Righteousness arise with healing in His wings. Heart disease, lung disease, cholera, rheumatic disease, tuberculosis, strep throat, malaria, leprosy, digestive disorders, intestinal disorders, fibrocystic breast disease, childbearing difficulties, toxic shock syndrome, hepatitis, measles, chickenpox, bronchitis, emphysema, osteoporosis, Parkinson's disease, gallbladder disease, influenza, encephalitis, smallpox, dysentery, thrombosis, angina, mumps, hypoglycemia, diabetes, brain and neurological disorders, rabies, rubella, kidney and bladder disease, liver disease, pancreatic disease, lupus, bone and joint disease, plague, whooping cough, endometriosis, progeria, sickle cell anemia, tumors, glandular disorders, Lyme disease, Crohn's disease, hypertension, parasites, Gulf War illness, viruses, cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, mental illness, ulcers, anthrax, Alzheimer's, blood disease, depression, PMS, malnutrition, pellagra, rickets, scurvy, back pain, bursitis, tetanus, phlebitis, bacterial disease, inflammations, genetic and birth defects, cystic fibrosis, migraines, burns, muscle and skin disease, gynecological disorders, gum disease, Hodgkin's disease, Lou Gehrig's disease, colitis, epidemics, anemia, allergies, fever, headaches, SIDS, arthritis, psoriasis, leukemia, all curses. Loose them and let them go. Cancer, all infections, all addictions, all injuries, AIDS, sexually transmitted disease, pneumonia, cirrhosis, bacterial meningitis, muscular dystrophy, blindness and eye disease, poisoning, spider and serpent bites, and scorpion stings. God is the Lord that healeth thee. Himself bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes, we were healed. Now I command you to be loosed from every stronghold of the enemy, every sickness and every disease. Heat is flowing over your body right now. In Jesus' name, be set free. And as she was sing swinging that sword, I want you to know that God is healing you. He's healing hips right now and backs in the name of Jesus. And there are people that have difficulty hearing and you are, have difficulty hearing in the natural. Ears be open in Jesus' name. But from this moment on, you are going to be hearing in the supernatural. The spines are being straightened right now in Jesus' name. And every time that whip came and every time that sword was swung, things were happening in the spirit realm. This is your moment. God has your number. Make Jesus your Messiah and Lord now. Don't wait. <laughs>